Welcome to a live recording from Member Meeting 35, presented by SocialMedia.org in New York. This is Lindsay Listansky from Coldwell Banker Real Estate with her presentation, Winning with Wintegration. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you so much for choosing my session. I know the other session sounded really interesting, so thank you so much. Thanks, LC, in the back. If you are tweeting today, my handle is at Elastansky. I assume in this room that is a fair way to kick off the presentation. Today we're going to kick off with winning with Wintegration. So in this room, we are the LeBrons, the Kobe's, the Michael Jordans of social media. The reason you're here is because we're all part of socialmedia.org. If you're not already a member, you need to join. But this is the best of the best in the business. We're the biggest social voices around the world. So while it's awesome to be the all-time greats in our exact vertical, social media, you really want to be more like this guy. Now, if you don't know who this is, this is Robert Ori. He is a former NBA player, and he didn't average 30 points a game. He didn't average 10 rebounds a game. He only started in 480 games. So why am I telling you to be like this guy? Why does he matter? Well, he matters because he actually has more championship titles than LeBron, Jordan, or Kobe. Someone say, yeah? I have an NBA fan in the, in the crowd? Nice. All right, so the reason we want to be like Robert Ori is because he is known as the ultimate role player. And in social media, it is so important for us to really know where our role fits in in the bigger picture. Now, without social media, a press release will still go out, a commercial will still air, and a campaign will still be successful, but with it, you win championships. And actually, Robert Ori's nickname was Big Shot Bob. The reason why he was nicknamed this is because in a big game, when someone like Kobe would get double or triple teamed, they kick it out to him and he'd hit the winning shot. So we want to be that person that when the time comes up in our campaign for us to hit the shot, we're there. So we want to be the ultimate role players of our companies. So in order to win championships, you must integrate. So now you know that integration is winning through integration. And when I first started in my role and started coming to these socialmedia.org events, there were so many member calls and meetings asking, OK, who really owns social? Is it marketing, PR, advertising? And we need to stop thinking like this. We need to think more like social media belongs to everyone. So I remember when I first started at Colo Banker, I kind of looked like this dog always peeking over my cub cubicle, like, what are you guys working on? What are you doing over there? Linz, go tweet this out, go Facebook, that's all we need for now. It has changed so much in the time I've been at Colbo Banker, and it's really because we've taken this integrated approach. I'm going to explain how we've done this with our most recent campaign called Home's Best Friend. But before I do, I want to, change, I want to set up the story. So at Colbo Banker, we're really trying to change the conversation in real estate. And before someone asked me out in the lobby, well, what does dogs have to do with real estate? And it's a great question. We are moving much farther away from the conversation around real estate that has to do with the financial element of owning or buying or selling a home. While that's, of course, important, from a marketing and advertising perspective, we're really focusing on the emotional tie to home ownership, to the, um, the storytelling aspect. All of our content really is around the lifestyle and emotional tie that we have with our homes. So this was first rolled out uh, last year, and we did a spot called Home Sweet Home. And this was to the soundtrack of Home Sweet Home and by Motley Crue, if you don't know. And the entire commercial was about that feeling that we get when we're driving home, we're almost there, it's that sigh of relief when we put the key in the door, we cook off those shoes, we rip off our work clothes, put on our sweatpants, and lay on the couch. We're so happy that we are in our oasis, and that's our happy place. So that campaign did really well. We were thrilled with the results. This year, we changed the monologue, or the dialogue, to say, okay, when you leave home, there's someone waiting for you, waiting all day long for your return. We wanted to show people who's on the other side of that door. So the beginning of the commercial is all about um, these dogs, and they're really sad, and they're looking out the window. They're waiting for their owners to come home. And then you hear a car alarm, and the key go in the door, and these dogs go nuts. If anyone has a dog, you know that happy dance, that jump up and down. And it really captures that, and as we've showed people you know, they say, oh, my dog does that. They do this crazy trick. And, you know, so it's really resonated with people, and we're really, really excited. So at Colbo Banker, we think there's no place like home with a dog. And the official launch of this commercial was going to be on the Academy Awards. And we chose this because we call shows like this DVR proof. Now, we know the way that we watch TV is pretty much all through DVR. We don't want to watch commercials, which makes it a huge challenge in marketing. So we choose. Uh, a lot of shows that are DVR proof like this, we chose a lot of sports shows because you don't watch sports on DVR because you already know what happened because we're all on Twitter, right? We know the score, so there's no reason to watch it. So we're choosing these DVR proof shows. 
Now, once we had this commercial, we were in our first brainstorm and we said, you know what? Actually, a lot of the dogs in the commercial have really sad stories. They were adopted dogs. This is a picture of Max, one of the dogs in our spot, and Max was actually found shot with a BB gun, and his owner really saved him. He um, actually got adopted on the day he was supposed to be put down, and he appears on our spot in the middle frame, and then we actually dressed him up for the night of the Academy Awards. So you can see this amazing transition of this dog and what home did for this dog. So we um, came up with something called the Homes for Dogs Project, and we partnered with AdoptAPet.com. So not only are we just having a commercial that's really cute and going to get the awe factor, but we did something for social good. And we have dedicated this year to finding 20,000 homes for 20,000 adoptable dogs. Because we believe that finding a man a home for the past 100 years is amazing, but now it's time for us to look at man's best friend. So we're really excited. We're calling this More Than a Pet Project. And we are really excited to find these amazing dogs that are forever home. So I said this is all for social good, but when you do social good, it's really good for social. So for our franchisees, there was this great community aspect because they could have local adoption drives, they could really get behind this cause. For consumers, of course, puppies work, everybody loves dogs. And then it was, of course, a win for the dogs because they're finding their forever home. And this is all part of this really huge launch program. So this picture looks really scary, but this is just an example of teamwork makes the dream work. And if you and your brand feel like you're this dog, kind of like, come on, like play with me, let's do stuff, let's work together, you gotta get past that and really wintergrate. And you can see this from the day that we shoot our commercials. So as our uh, VP of broker engagement was at the commercial shoot, he was already thinking about how can we get social involved. So he was taking behind the scene video, social images, bloopers, and if you know anything about working with kids and dogs, there was a ton of blooper footage, and it's online, it's a really, really cute video. So I love the fact that, you know, in the past he was like, we're gonna do a commercial, we're gonna figure out social afterwards. From day one of the commercial shoot, he was really focused on creating great social assets. So this is a look at this map, and this is a mind map that um, my friend Tori in the audience put together, and it shows kind of our, our flow of brainstorming. So you can see everything from pre-launch buzz to landing pages, social, blog content, media, but you, what you really see here is that social's tying into every one of these things, as is PR, advertising, media. We were firing on all cylinders. And if you wanna make one of these mind maps to organize the campaign you're working on, there's a free software called XMind. Thank you, Tori, for letting me know about that. So if you wanna check it out, it's a free program. It's really awesome. All right, so we get to launch week of the Academy Awards, and the first thing we do is work with our PR team, and we said, you know, in the past, you've done kind of traditional marketing, what can we do different this year? So this year, our main focus was finding a website to break the news that was gonna make sense for um, you know, a broader audience, so we chose Mashable. We broke the story on Mashable, and it went live, and we were like, a real estate ad doesn't even belong on Mashable. So the fact that this is getting picked up and getting so much coverage and really starting to get shares, we knew we were onto something really great. So that was our PR approach, and then after that, we kept going. We came up with great content for our blog. We uh, wrote stories about all the adoptable dogs. We created a section called dog-eared content. There are a lot of dog puns in this, so bear with me. <laughs> so uh, we created everything from how to move if you own a dog to how to live with a dog if they're chewing up your furniture, quick tips and tricks, just really tying in with that lifestyle of living with a dog. Our PR team did everything traditional from working with the Today Show to actually reaching out to bloggers like ilovedogs.com, which ended up sending a tremendous amount of traffic for us. And then for the uh, agents in our office, from the video shoot that we did, we had a ton of still images that we were creating for Instagram, social, we gave them branded cover photos. So this really started to be this great collaborative effort. All right, so now it's game time. Lights, camera, social, this is when we stepped up to be the Robert Ori of our program. This is when we had to take a shot. So the day of, the Academy Awards, we got all the dogs from our commercial together and we created our own red carpet. We dressed up the dogs, we put tutus, tuxes, and it was probably the cutest video I've ever seen. They were doing tricks for us, they were strutting their stuff. So this was a great way to drive awareness that we were actually gonna kick off that night. That led into a Twitter party that we hosted with adoptapet.com, so we were inviting people to tweet with us during the Academy Awards, and I'll get into that soon. The one thing, and anyone in here that has been in any of these meetings was probably waiting for the Oreo reference, so I'm kicking it off. You can all make fun of me on Twitter that I'm talking about Oreo, but this is important for this case. So 
Real-time marketing can really land you in the doghouse. We all try to be part of these great conversations on things like you know, the Super Bowl, the Oscars, but if your brand doesn't belong in that, that uh, conversation, you can get your hand slapped for it. And we've seen a ton of brands getting made fun of on ad age, you know, just trying too hard. So we make a very concerted effort to only speak when we really have a, a room in that room, uh, the uh, ability to speak at that kind of event. So beware of chasing that Oreo moment. For us, we said we're not gonna just tweet for the sake of tweeting that, that night. We don't wanna just talk about our commercial. How can we make this bigger? So Tori and I actually had the chance to attend the Academy Awards, which was amazing. And we were able to live tweet from the red carpet, reminding people to watch the show. And I think if that was the only thing we did that night, it would have been a fail. It would have been like, you're just marketing. No one wants to listen to this. What else do you have for me? So then, Alexandra, who is our social media specialist, came with the idea of, how about we do some things with adopt a pet really cute puns about fashion for paws. And that really became a great way to continue the conversation from the red carpet all the way up to the time the commercial aired. So this really got the conversation going. From there, we said, OK, how can we use the show to really just tie back to the core of our mission? So we use the show to actually find homes as part of our Homes for Dogs project um, by working with adoptapet.com beforehand and saying, OK, every dog that shows up in that commercial, let's find their lookalike on adoptapet.com and afterwards say, if you really liked Bailey, here's Max. If you really liked uh, Walker, I'm sorry, if you really liked Bailey, here's Walker. So this was not only a great way to continue the conversation, but it was really tying back to our cause, so it made sense why we were tweeting. And working like a dog for months actually paid off. So we were really thrilled that right from the beginning of the show, our hashtag, which was Home Rock, started trending. And you know during these shows, I think that night there was like four million tweets. So a real estate ad showing up in the trending topics, like we had no business. You know the trending topics are what are reserved for like celebrity deaths and Middle East uprisings. So for us to see a real estate, fact, right? Truth, yes, fact. So for us to see Home Rocks trending that night over you know, some of the other things that were going on during the show, we were so thrilled. And we actually just loved seeing something like this. Kudos to real estate commercial that didn't need sponsored tweets to trend. That was just like the ultimate pat on the back for us. We were really excited. So not only were we trending, but consumers were so excited about these dogs. So people were saying best commercial ever, um, and the Oscar goes to the puppies. So the fact that it was resonating with consumers was also something that we were really excited about. And then the next day, we didn't know, but that night, Engagement Labs was actually tracking the conversation on social, and they named us as the uh, ruler of Oscars that night. So they said that we stole the show um, above other brands, and I'm not gonna say any other brands because they might be in this room, so we'll just keep going. But you can see that this, again, was our Robert Ori moment. We took, you know, we took the shot, we really scored, and we were so thrilled with the outcome. Now that the commercial's over, you know, we have a tendency once a campaign does well to kind of just drop it and let it go. We want to make sure that we continue it. So now we're doing Wolf Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, Alexandra finds one of the cutest puppies that you have ever seen, or dogs, and she will create an Instagram post and a Facebook picture and send traffic to um, those adoption sites. And then we're seeing our affiliates doing this on their local sites as well. So we're really excited to keep this going. Thank you for the time check. OK, so here are our results. What does this all mean? Was this worth it? So for us, video views was a huge KPI. So for our soft launch, which was uh, 211 to 221, we were hoping to get around 150,000 views. I know some of the brands in here are like, that's not a lot. But compared to last year, same time, that was about what we were shooting for. We ended up getting 3 million views in that time period, which was like laughable, 1,900% of our goal. So we were really thrilled with that. After that, we said, OK, what are we going to shoot for? And you know, one million just sounds like a great big round number. So we we're like, let's go for a million. That would be awesome. A real estate commercial getting a million views would be fantastic. Today, we're at six million, which is 500% of our goal. So we're really happy with that as well. The other, of course, important uh, KPI for us was dog adoptions. We're at nearly 3,000. And we expect this number to go up really, really high quickly because we're having a national adoption week uh, with all of our affiliates across the US. So we're really excited to see how many dogs find their forever home. This little guy, his name is Blue, which just happens to be the color of our brand. And he was the first dog adopted from our Homes for Dogs project. So we're psyched that these dogs are finding homes as a result of our campaign. And they say every dog has their day. And we were just browsing Facebook to see what was being said about our commercial. And we stumbled across a news outlet from Azerbaijan, which I had to look up on the map because I didn't know where it was. And they actually got 20 million views, which is more than our entire campaign. So you can say that all of this was a waste and that we should have worked with them, but we were interested to see that. 
So you can see that the language of dog love and puppy love is really across the board. Everyone loves dog, and this really resonated with everyone that saw it. So now that you know about our campaign, let's talk about some of the tricks that we learned along the way. First, second screen involvement is the new norm. Anyone who watches TV is most likely looking at their phone or tablet or doing something else. We found out that one out of two Americans are engaging in another digital activity during TV shows. That's called screen stacking. So for us, we don't put our URL to coldwellbanker.com in our commercial. We think if someone wants to find coldwellbanker.com, they'll Google it or put coldwellbanker.com in. So we're using that opportunity to speak to someone to add hashtags. So we're now adding hashtags in all of our commercials so that we really um, hope that people will bring the conversation online, and we attribute that to why we were trending that night. So hashtags on commercials definitely work for us. Something else that we learned from the year prior, we last year announced that we were having a Twitter party too, and it did well, but this year it just exploded. So we really learned that you can't just have a party and hope people show up. So we did a lot of work beforehand to really promote what we were doing online. So we sent out invitations, we had RSAPs, we promoted the party, we had party favors. So this really helped us to ensure that this party really went. So you could see we had an Instagram picture um, inviting people. We sent out office posters to all of our affiliates to really get them on deck. We had branded collateral like dog bowls, leashes, and uh, dog tags, which I'm going to give out to people at the end if you have a dog. So presents for you. Yay. Um, the next thing we learned, if you guys aren't doing this already, the ability to go on Instagram and use the emojis as hashtags is a really great way for people to find your pictures. So if you are in a brand with, say, food, hashtag the fork and knife. People are going to find your pictures ahead of the curve if you work in, um, I don't know, well, food's a good example. So if you're using those uh, hashtags, it's great. We went back to all of our old pictures and added the hashtag to hope to give the campaign some new legs. So definitely check that out for your brand. Another thing that we learned, our annotations are a possum, sorry guys, <laughs> way to drive traffic for free. So if you're not using these on YouTube, this is a really great way to uh, drive viewers to more content, increase community actions, and attract new subscribers. So definitely check that out if uh, video content is something that's important to you. It's driving traffic for us. Thank you. And something else that we learned are video ads. Are, do I have any cat people in here? Because I'm a cat person. Yeah, so they're the cat's pajamas, not the dog's pajamas. And the thing that we do at Coldwell Banker is we will only run a social advertising campaign if it's attached to a video. We find that that's the most efficient way to do advertising on Facebook and that they really give a lot of weight to those uh, pieces of content. So we have gotten to the point where our cost per view is between one and three cents. So for us, it's super affordable, really highly targeted, and we're only running that type of content. So in summary, every tail wags with a wintergrated approach. For us, our aha moment was that everyone took all of the credit. So it wasn't just something that PR did. It wasn't just the campaign. It wasn't the marketing department. We really all shared the win, which is really a great thing for our team culture. But of course, social media helped win the championship. So the key to being the top dog in your company is to be the next big shot Bob of your next campaign. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you are interested in adopting a dog and giving them a forever home, please head to coldwellbanker.com slash dogs and check it out. And my uh, Twitter handle is at Elastansky, and you can reach me at ll at coldwellbanker.com. So we do have an opportunity now to uh, have Lindsay answer some questions. Uh, please raise your hand. We've got Megan and Lauren Clevenger, uh, who will be willing to bring the mic over to you, because we are recording all this, so please no swearing. Uh, but if you would start with your name and your company. I hope no one curses at me in this room. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that's normally Jeez. a Jeez. Um, but if you'd, if you'd uh, bring that around. And um, if, if, the, if you ask about something proprietary, Lindsay's just shared a whole lot of information. If there's a question she can't answer, she, she'll do her best. I'll I'm curse sure. at you. Yeah, there just we go. Kidding. Was that was, the message was for you. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say because we curse a lot in our company. We're from Aust we're in Australia, that's why. Um, my name is Marion Berteau, and I'm from Flight Center Liberty Travel. So we're a travel company. I was wondering how long did it take you to create the whole strategy, and how many people were on your team? So because it was a wintergrated approach, it's I mean everyone in our headquarters in New Jersey, it's our whole PR team, all of our agencies, all of social. I would say in the office, it's probably between 15 and 20 people. And then we have our PR agency, our digital agency, our creative agency that actually made our commercial. And we usually start planning for this type of really big campaign um, in the summer prior to launch. So we launched this in February. So I would say 
July, August is really when we start planning everything. Um, they usually shoot the commercials in the fall and then by right before New Year's, we're really like ramping up with those mind maps and starting to plan how we're gonna roll everything out. Any other questions? Very good, more questions. We'll be able to bring the microphone over to you That's while Lauren's good. bringing it over there. Can I ask real quick, Lindsay, the, yeah. with, the, with the, it almost seemed a coincidence to, to bring in adopt a pet and to figure out, hey, mm -hmm. here's how we tell the dog stories. Yeah. Was there uh, any question about scope creep? Uh, when, when you got into that part, well, is this, would that take away from the focus? Um, yes and no. I mean, we, for us, it was such an added value because, you know, everyone does dogs. And while it's really cute and that's great, we needed to find a partner that really had value that came with their name. So we could have worked with, you know, someone in Madison, New Jersey, and that would have been great. But for us, they had such a great national voice. And we did a lot of work, and I give all the credit really to our PR team with finding the right partner. Um, and we, you know, talk, we over communicated with them. We said, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to share this? How are adoptions going to count? Can we do it through traffic? So I, we were very careful about not stepping on each other's toes, and um, they've just been amazing at, at kind of giving us the spotlight. And that was from the get go. We said, we want to work with you, but here is what is important for us to achieve, and mm -hmm. we want to make sure that you, know, you get your recognition too, but they've been the best partner that we could have asked for. Very good. Yeah. Hey, Lance. Oh, hey, so okay. I just saw on Twitter somebody was asking about the Oreo moment. I know you touched on it in your presentation. Can yeah. you maybe just like give a, shed a little light sure. on what that was again? Thanks. Thanks for being Alexander my eyes Kaczynski, on Twitter. Colwell Banker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the Oreo moment, if you don't know, is a moment that kind of went down in social uh, media history. I would say it was probably one of the top ranked moments that we've ever seen for real time marketing. During the Super Bowl, I don't know, three years two ago? Years two ago. or three years ago, the lights went out during the game and Oreo jumped in and said, well, um, you can dunk in the dark or something to that nature. And Twitter exploded. They were like, this is genius. Their social media person needs a raise. And ad age, every single person that you would think would talk about social media just was like, this is the greatest thing ever. But it started something in our in social media that was kind of a bad thing because after that happened, everyone's like, well, I want my Oreo moment. Do I need a command center every time one of these big shows comes on? And you know, should we pre like pre schedule things to actually happen and then jump in and you know pretend? It just it opened up a door to kind of some bad best practices. Oreo nailed it. It just happened to be the right place at the right time, but it's really, really hard for that to work for your brand. So even if you're not advertising, you know, your door might open and you can slide in, but most of the time it's not going to be a good thing. Consumers don't like it and they feel like, you know, it's a brand trying to speak where they're not welcome. You had mentioned about the, uh, the way exceeding the expectations on, on the metrics. Yeah, that we undershot. Set. We're all losing our jobs next yeah. year because we're not, <laughs> there's yeah. no way we're going to achieve year. this next Just year. Just wait until next year. Yeah. <laughs> um, were any of the things that you were looking at for this particular campaign different than what you might normally do? You, you had compared a little bit to the number of views, for example, the year yeah, before. Yeah, I mean, for us, um, blog traffic and website traffic is really huge because for us in real estate, and anyone that thinks Coal Banker is a bank, like if you're just realizing it, we actually sell homes. One of our founders is named Banker, so he kind of screwed us up for life. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, we love, we love Mr. Banker. Um, but in real estate, leads are what is our lifeblood for our real estate agents. So traffic was a huge uh, thing for us. So seeing that year over year uh, increase in social referral traffic was something that we really didn't think of measuring the year before and something that we definitely kept an eye on this year. Very good. Another question? Let's start with your name and company again. Matt Thompson from HH Greg. Hi. Hi. Um, was wondering how, when you first came up with this concept, how you convinced the higher ups um, to, to go along with it because we just started a campaign that's starting to get some legs on social media using dogs. And the question I always get is, well, how's that going to help us sell, or sell products? Yep. So how did you go about convincing them that it was worthwhile? Um, well, first and foremost, our CEO loves rescued dogs, and he has two. So that helped us a lot. Um, but I, there really isn't a lot of convincing. I know that that's not the answer you want to hear, but our brand is really, really passionate about social. They see the value in it. Our VP, like I was saying, from the commercial shoot was thinking about how he could integrate social into what we were doing. So for us, it's not a matter of convincing. It's just, you know, figuring out what kind of budget we have for things. Um, I, that's, there's, it's just not a problem at Coal Banker, thankfully. When I first started, it definitely was, but I think the more value you can show, tying it back to us for like leads is very important. Um, but we're, we're really fortunate in our brand. Our CMO is a huge tweeter. He's always online, so we got really lucky. 
Is there a chance that there's a more permanent connection, you know, more than just the campaign? Is this something that extends? Yeah, I mean, our, we've never seen our affiliates jump onto anything like this that we've done before. This whole dog campaign has just been explosive. So we think there will definitely be an element to this um, idea of dog adoptions next year. We were tossing around the idea, and I can say this because we're at socialmedia.org, and what stays here, you know, what is said here well, stays we're here, recording, maybe. We're recording, this will be shared. It's okay. So, okay. No, so anyway, we were thinking maybe how we could tie this in with veterans and walking them home with dogs to help them out. So we're trying to think of ways to do this next year. We're not really sure, but I think the dogs will definitely be sticking around for a while. I hope they do. Very good. By the way, if you got, if we got time for a couple more questions, and I forgot to mention, Lindsay had said that we've got yes, some of the giveaways, some of the swag. And there's a ton outside, Marrying so I have dog bowls, leashes, uh, collars, we have a ton of stuff. So if you have a dog, please feel free to take home goodies for them. Any more questions from the group? We got one more in the back, Megan. Back in the oh. darkness. It's a little tricky to see up here. Uh, it's Mark Leatham from Kingston Technology. I just wanted to understand the- Can you speak up, please? I'm sorry, we're having a hard time- Closer, hearing. is that better? Thank you, Hello. better. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to understand how you were tracking to leads at a local level. How, how did that work? Tracking, you, tracking you, you, to leads? You, you, you were Are you saying for the adoptions? No, no, no. Oh, for our real estate agents? Exactly. So how we did have that something process called, work? Yep, so we have something called Lead Router, uh, which we tie in with our Google Analytics team, and they can see based on like where traffic is coming from. So that social referral traffic is kind of like the metric that we're really measuring, and we can see when someone, where someone comes from once they enter our site, and we can watch what actions they're taking. So if they're on a uh, Coldwell Bank or agent's page, like they have profile pages on our site, if they click email or call, that would technically be like a lead conversion. Very good. Everybody, let's hear it for the Senior Manager of Media Engagement. Thank you, guys. Coldwell Banker, it's Lindsay Lewis Thanks. Thank you. The case study you just saw was presented at socialmedia.org's Member Meeting 35 in New York on May 20th, 2015. Presenters included social media leaders from Capital One, Hewlett Packard, Coldwell Banker Real Estate, United Technologies, A&E Network, Johnson Controls, Lululemon Athletica, and TD Ameritrade. Socialmedia.org member meetings are the most useful, efficient, and productive meetings for social media leaders at big brands. You'll collaborate with smart and generous people like you with jobs like yours at companies like yours. No vendors, no agencies, no sponsors, no consultants, and no small businesses allowed, ever. Socialmedia.org is the brand's only community for social media leaders at really big companies. Members help one another by sharing best practices, practical ideas, and solutions to the issues they can't talk about anywhere else. We're all about fast answers, real-time collaboration, and an internal focus on your company, not campaigns. If you're leading social at a major brand, you belong in our family. Learn more at socialmedia.org.